Hey, hey, you. Come here. Yeah, you. You, get over here. Before we start today's video, I've got some special news for you only. Guess what? Mossamon Curry, my Vite Ramen flavor, it's back in stock. It's the best Vite Ramen flavor ever, in my biased opinion. And when you buy from Vite Ramen, not just my flavor, but any of them, you get peace of mind knowing that you're getting healthy, quick, and ethically made food. These guys make not only pretty much the best ramen ever, but they treat me and their actual employees super well. Listen, if you get the Mossamon Curry flavor, here's what you do. The instructions won't tell you this, I will. Treat it less like a ramen and more like a curry dish. Remove almost all the water and add some peanut butter. It's incredible. I honestly should have footage of the way I make it with crunchy peanut butter, but I actually ate every single bit of ramen they sent me and it was hundreds of dollars worth. But yeah, if you're interested, follow the link down in the description. You can use code Eckhart's for a special little discount and some other surprises. And if you've tried Vite Ramen, let me and everyone else know down in the comments. I will not be deleting any honest reviews. But let's get started. The Millennium Falcon, the Ghost, perhaps my personal favorite, the Outrider. Why do all of these smuggler ships look so damn similar? And no, this isn't a trick question. The answer is because these ships are creations of the CEC, the Corellian Engineering Corporation. Today, we'll be talking about CEC and its line of smaller starships. I've actually already done a video on the Corellian Blockade Runner, another CEC creation. And if you've seen that video, you'll probably recognize some of the same design factors when we talk about their freighters. After I cover the corporation at the end, I'm going to go over some key CEC designs and give a little bit of history. So in reality, the CEC isn't one single shipbuilder, rather it's a conglomeration of at least most shipbuilders, legitimate ones in the Corellian system. The Corellian shipyards don't just pump out small dinky little freighters, and in fact, they're well known for their quality shipbuilding at any size and purpose, including dedicated military military warships like the Imperial Star Destroyer, which Corellia had contracts for, to their own dedicated dreadnoughts during the Second Galactic Civil War. The old Star Wars Legends version of the Millennium Falcon Handbook actually has some really nice detail about CEC and why they're so good. And the interesting thing about this history is that you can see many of their strengths actually arise from what were previously weaknesses. CEC always had a reputation for building fast, durable, easily modifiable ships, which we'll talk about later later, but due to some criticisms relating to uninspired designs in CEC ships, they actually worked with other shipbuilders, including those from Sinar, which led to the development of, among other things, the YT series, which, and I quote, revolutionized the interstellar shipping industry through its unparalleled application of modular design. The YT series, and yes, that includes the Millennium Falcon, I'll go into some of the details later, was essentially a main corridor, a large windowed cockpit, and modular modular sections which could be switched out to fit the purpose of the pilot. Not only was modularity built into all CEC designs, but Corellian Engineering actually encouraged individual pilots to customize the ship for their liking. They put their money where their mouth was, however, by not only allowing pilots to do the dirty work themselves, but also providing space frames and compartments which could be easily swapped out, and even producing these variants themselves. This ended up being being beneficial. The standardization of parts and materials ended up saving CEC money. This was partially due to a unique benefit that Corellia only shared with a few of the galaxy's very large shipbuilders. Because CEC had so many individual shipyards within, they could actually manufacture each part of the ship in system. For example, the Millennium Falcon's engines were Gyrodyne SRB-42s. We don't know for sure, but I think it pretty likely that Gyrodyne is meant to be one of the smaller shipbuilders within the CEC, one specializing specifically on engines. I really like this image which shows how one specific ship line, the YT-1300, can have so many variants which wouldn't even appear to be the same ship or at least the same specific class. And I've probably titled this video why all Star Wars freighters look the same or something. That's the interesting part. Although two YT-1300s could look radically different, they all share the Corellian design aesthetic, largely due to the standardization of parts and modules. And yeah, CEC is just doing it better than everyone else. That's why they're appealing so much to freighter pilots, smugglers, whomever. Not only were they already producing top-of-the-line ships, but a smuggler can buy a CEC product, either order 
ordered on demand to look a certain way. Maybe it's got one cargo hold because it needs to carry some type of material or a certain cockpit piece because of the size of the alien species flying the ship. I think you get the idea. But of course, these adjustments could also be made after market, meaning that older freighter models could stay relevant, not only as they're changed for the needs of the pilot, but as new technology comes out. And this extends to illegal modifications as well. Corellian ships were easily upgradable with military technology. That was a feature, not a bug. And as with the Corellian Corvette, there's sort of the benefit here that CEC vessels are among the most popular in the entire galaxy. There are certain ship types when you see them, especially if you're, say, an Imperial inspector, you know they're probably loaded with illegal weapons, especially dedicated warships. However, with a ship like the Falcon, it looks like a trillion other CEC YT 1300s and many of the real dangerous and illegal modifications are only evident on close inspection. When looking at history and specific ships, as mentioned, the Corellian Engineering Corporation really gained fame in the eyes of civilian traders with their YG series light freighter. These were, by the time of the Battle of Yavin, perhaps hundreds or thousands of years old, but some are still active, again, because of the ability to upgrade individual components. The YT series revolutionized interstellar shipping, and you can see this first model, the YT-1000, which you may notice shares a lot of design similarities to another famous freighter, the Ebon Hawk, specifically the Dynamic Class freighter. The idea there is that CEC basically made their own version of the Dynamic with the XS stock freighter, which then many years later became the basis for the YT-1000. Subsequent models until the YT-1300 made only small changes, including to the side of the cargo bay and where the cockpit was mounted, with the YT-1300 finally fully buying into the promise of modularity. There were standard starting options for both personnel and freight moving, depending on what you needed, but the Millennium Falcon Owner's Guide really hammers home the idea that no two YT-1300 ships were exactly alike because they're outfitted to specific requirements before leaving the shipyards. So any real designation is technically meaningless, but does provide some decent understanding of how certain models of YT-1300s were. And again, this is all due to the size and complexity of CEC's shipyards. If you've played X-Wing Alliance, you'll probably recognize this ship. It's the YT-2000. You pilot the Otana in that game. It's a modified YT-2000. According to the handbook, it was one of the best combat combinations of speed, cargo capacity, and defensive systems of all CEC freighter types, but because of industrial espionage, it was sort of pushed into service and thus was seen as a little bit touchier than other YT models. So it was discontinued in favor of what I think is probably my favorite YT variant, the YT-2400. The YT-2400 was actually less modular than the 1300, but was more compact while offering the same amount of cargo space. In its stock form, it was also also sturdier with more spots for weapons and a stronger overall hull. The downside being less room for living quarters and luxuries. Outside of the YT line, CEC also made other freighters which have the same general aesthetic sense. The design similarities in the CEC VCX line, for example, are pretty obvious. Many features carrying over, including an optional auxiliary starfighter, and that goes up to other freighter models like the YZ or even some of the larger ship types like the action transport. But that's why they all look so similar, because many freighters and transports in Star Wars are just different configurations of the same few Corellian designs. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.